with authority. Well, Steve, welcome. Right off the top, I want to say I'm really happy to see that you shaved because the last time we talked with you, you looked like Tom Hanks in Castaway. I mean, I, you know, I yeah. thought you were going to start calling me Wilson. I was beginning to feel like uh, Tom Hanks on, on Castaway. So, um, and still, you know, not playing basketball and coaching basketball, it, it, it feels strange, but, um, you know, it's uh, at least we are getting closer to a, a training camp and a draft and we know when we're drafting. So at least we've got a little momentum towards next season. So last week was kind of nuts in the sports world, to put it mildly, starting with the Milwaukee Bucks deciding rather abruptly and without telling anybody really <laughs> that they were not going to play. And that set off a lot of dominoes. And before we knew it, basically most of the sports world was postponing events. Ultimately then the NBA players come back and they get a resolution uh, to work on social justice issues while they continue to stay in the bubble and, and play with the playoffs. What's your overall assessment again, from afar, since you are outside, I, I, I know, you know, all the people inside, but it's got to be weird. Did you at any point think, oh, I wish I was inside to try to help with some of this? Yeah, I think the whole time, um, you know, that this has been going on, there's, uh, there's a big part of me that wishes I was there, uh, not only for the basketball part, but, uh, you know, to, to uh, lend a helping hand on the social justice uh, front. Um, it really is a, uh, a big battle. And, um, you know, the NBA, I think, has been fantastic. The league office has been very supportive of the players and the coaches. Uh, I think last week, understandably, the players were just frustrated. Um, and how could they not be? You know, how could we all not be? Um, you know, you, you, you peacefully protest, as our players have done, um, you, you want change, but when change doesn't happen and another black man gets shot seven times in the back uh, by a policeman, um, it's infuriating, um, especially uh, if you're a black man uh, or woman and you're raising children and you're uh, scared in your own country. So these are all things that we think about um, for our brethren within the league and for ourselves. Um, and we, 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 we understand that, that, you know, we have to do everything possible. And I think for the players, um, they realized people weren't maybe paying attention to the peaceful protests, so they took it a step further. And it, and it became an economic protest of sorts. And, uh, and it was very successful uh, because uh, the league came back and, and ownership agreed to a, a list of, uh, of uh, things to, to take back to their respective cities and, and demand. And, and uh, I think it was really a powerful joint statement. We've joked and, you know, I call you a Renaissance man and all that, but kind of had a, an awakening of sorts and reading more about the black experience in America. What have you learned about that that you didn't know before that maybe you thought, oh, yeah, I hang out with all these guys. I see them all the time. I'm coaching all these guys. I, I know what they're going through when in reality, maybe we don't. What I think I've learned that's most important is really the definition of racism. You know, I think as a white person, I think we all think of racism as an act. We think of some person uh, using a bad uh, racial epitaph to refer to somebody or a guy in a hood, you know, burning a cross. Um, racism is really uh, a system um, that we are all a part of. And while we may not be um, directly responsible for the system, we're complicit with uh, our existence within the system, if that makes sense. And yet it's really easy for somebody like me to make a statement, you know, maybe donate to a charity and then go back to my really nice house and my nice neighborhood and don't think anything more of it. Um, but you have to think of it as a system and how it affects the entire black community and also how it affects us as white people in our country. Is this the country we want to live in with this moral stain that we carry? Uh, but most importantly, what are we doing going forward to try to reverse this? Um, what are we doing to, to help educate young 
black kids? Are we, are we improving schools? Are we improving nutrition? All of these things are part of racism, but in our minds, we're not responsible. Um, and I think that's what I've, what I've learned. We are responsible. It's up to us to, to take part in, in fixing this system. The Warriors have launched a program that's called Heart, Feet, Tongue, Voice, and Wallet, involving the Warriors Community Foundation, which is run by Nicole Lacob. What are the goals of that initiative in particular? Well, I think the number one goal is to, to educate uh, ourselves, um, our organization. Um, I, I'm, I'm just so proud of our organization for the internal education that's gone on. Uh, with our employees, um, uh, you know, a seven-week anti-racism curriculum. There it is. Uh, that um, I think 85% of our employees uh, took part in. Uh, and so, to educate ourselves and understand now, okay, where can we make a difference? Um, and that means now, all right, we've got this knowledge. We're part of this. Uh, you know, big company with Golden State Warriors, and we have this huge platform, where can we make a difference in the community? Through the Warriors Community Foundation, but also uh, politically, through local government, through uh, policies. Where, how can we help our fellow man? Um, how can we try to help create a more just society? Uh, and it's impossible to divide that from politics. You know, the old adage that, you know, stick to sports and we don't want to hear politics. Sorry, it's just this politics are heavily involved in everybody's daily life. And uh, so as an organization, I think we have to see how can we impact people's lives in a really positive manner. I know one of the things that's being worked on is to use Chase Center in San Francisco as either a voting location or a place where people can register to vote. Um, you know, perhaps it'll be a drop-off spot for ballots. I, I was thinking, uh, you know, vote with Steve Kerr and, you know, some lucky fan, a, a season ticket holder or whatever, or not a season ticket holder actually is even better. They get to give the ballot to you in person, uh, whoever that lucky person would be. I think there would be people that, I mean, Steph Curry might be slightly more popular, but you know what? Uh, <laughs> just barely. Just yeah. Barely. Um, but, and you guys, don't you guys have a registered vote kind of a contest or a text line, something that where people can get involved in that way? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing a contest with the Atlanta Hawks. Um, and it's not quite, uh, it doesn't quite keep track of how many people we each register. It's basically pledges, um, to register to vote in, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to obviously do it with California voters. They're doing it with Georgia voters. We're keeping track. We're losing, which is a good thing because we need more voters in Georgia than we do in California, to be honest. And, and Georgia has suffered a lot more voter suppression than we have in California. So um, our organization is really uh, doing everything possible to, uh, to get people out to vote to give them the ability to do so um, with ease. Uh, and, um, and I'm very proud of the organization for putting in that work. You're on Twitter a lot. You've been a, a vocal critic of the president. Uh, that's not a secret. I just wonder every day what your mentions are like. Do you even read them? Because it's got to be just epic. It's got to be unbelievable what people write back to you. I some I I I, uh, I try to avoid it, but also um, my wife did something. I don't know how any of this stuff works, technology-wise, but she found a way to filter out all the bots and uh, the haters and stuff. So I don't see a, you know a whole lot of that stuff. I'm well aware that um, you know I'm I'm getting crushed out there by a lot of people. Uh, I don't care really, honestly. It, I mean, it, as a human being, I think we're all, you know, conditioned to, uh, to worry about what people say, but um, uh, it's better to avoid it. Um, but I think also under the circumstances, this is so important, you know, where we go in this country, uh, who we elect as president, who we elect in the Senate. It is so crucial because uh, right now we have, uh, someone who was dividing us and inciting violence uh, every day, someone who has, has shown that he is a racist uh, basically throughout his adult life. 
and that continues uh, his racist comments. And so um, the emperor isn't wearing any clothes. We have to point that out. Yeah. Well, you say you're getting crushed. You're also beloved by a lot of people because of the stands that you're taking. So there's that. I mean, you know, there, there's the positive yeah. side too. Uh, so, and, and I would guess based on the last election that, um, you know, maybe three or four more million people in this country like me than don't like me. <laughs> but I don't know. In some of those, you know, some of those states, I'm, I'm really unpopular. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we know what states those are. Maybe we could get your wife to fix my account as well, because most of the people seem to think my first name is Idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I may just change the, you know, just Idiot, to make it easy for everybody. That way they know who they're responding to. But that, they, that's a theme. It's a theme. So, you know, I'm going to try to, I may have to call your wife and see, uh, you know, what do we, what do, what do I have to do here? Do it like they did. I have, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway. Uh, I hope at some point we could actually stop doing this via computers and we can get back to my favorite subject, which is, of course, Obi Toppin and the Warriors draft. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday we'll be back to uh, actually speaking face to face and, uh, you know, playing basketball in front of fans. And uh, I know we all we all look forward to that and, and so much more in, uh, in our daily lives. But uh, Idiot, it's great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> With authority.